Hello, this is Tom from Travel Productions with another Blender quick tip. And then this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can make a pile of rubble in Blender with rocks without having to use a particle system. Because uh, a particle system is kind of tricky and it is, it's uh, really taxing on your um, CPU and your graphics card. But this is an easier way to do it and it's faster. And we're going to use an add-on called the Cell Fracture, which is already part of Blender. So I've already opened up a scene in Blender. And some important steps you have to do in order to get the right results quickly in order to avoid being frustrated. Uh, I'm scrolling up with, on my mouse wheel to scroll to zoom in. And the first thing we want to have to do to this is add a texture to it. Okay. Actually, let's not add a texture just yet. Let's subdivide it because the way the self-fracture uh, add-on works is that the more uh, your mesh is subdivided, the better results you'll get. But if it's too subdivided, it'll slow down your machine somewhat. So we're going to go to tab edit mode. So press tab on your keyboard to go to edit mode. And we're going to press W to subdivide. From the pop-up menu, click subdivide. And then from the, this menu here, just expand that. And click in that little area and, and type in 20. And let's uh, minimize that. And then press tab to get out of edit mode. The next thing to do is to add a texture to it to avoid trying to add a texture later. Because if you try to add a texture later, it's going to be an issue. So Let's hover our mouse over this little corner here. When it turns into a plus sign, left click and drag down to, sub to uh, divide your user interface into two separate windows. From here, we're going to go to this little section here. Let's click on that. And it's already been activated. Use nodes. We're going to go to this icon here. Click on that. And from the drop down menu, click on Shader Editor. Uh, let's hold down the middle mouse button, pull up, drag up with your mouse to zo uh, zoom in, scroll up on your mouse wheel. Left click to activate this um, node only. And then press Ctrl T to activate the node wrangler. And if your node wrangler isn't activated, if you press Ctrl T, not nothing happens. Go to edit, preferences, type in node. From there, click this box to add a check mark to activate your node wrangler. And then come back here, click on this, and then press Control T. And then from here, we're going to pull up, pull these nodes up. So press A, and then be on your keyboard for box select. Hold on your left mouse button, click and drag, and then press G on your keyboard, and just move your mouse up. Left click to deactivate that. And we're going to turn this from UV to generate it. So left click on your mouse over this purple node left click and hold and drag this down to put out the noodle and we're going to turn this from point to texture and from here we're going to click on open and you, you, you can need to uh, nav navigate to where you've saved your textures I'm navigating to where I've saved mine and I'm going to change the appearance of uh, my choices here by clicking on this little icon and it'll show me the images instead of just the, uh, the names so left click there I'm going to scroll down on my mouse with my mouse to where I've uh, saved the texture. Okay, let me go down a little bit more. Pick on this one, double click. And we're going to see what this looks like. So we're going to click on this icon to change the appearance in our user interface. Left click there. You can see that it's been stretched out on the side. We don't, we don't want that. We want an even display or laying out of our texture on our mesh. So go up here, scroll in to zoom scroll in with your middle mouse button to zoom in and then from here go from flat click on that from the, the uh, dropped up menu click on box and now it's all evened out so let's change our interface once again to just the flat shading let's uh, close this out we don't need the uh, shader editor anymore so hover your mouse over the uh, divider there when it turns to two double arrows right click and then click join and then you can just pull this up to point your arrow up to where you want it to be joined to and left click and then it's joined and to activate the cell fracture add-on once again go to edit preferences and then the search bar click or type in cell from there cell fracture add-on should pop up click in here to activate it with a checkbox and once it's been activated go to object when you click on that from the drop down menu, go to quick effects and then cell fracture. I usually just leave the parameters the way they are at the default settings. 
once again, you can change these for better results. But from the from what I've seen from my own uh, experiments, uh, this is just does as good. And click OK, and then it begins to fracture the mesh. You can do this with um, a flat mesh. It's, it usually does, works better with a mesh that is a uh, you know has sides to it, has depth, heights, and you know volume to it and width. So once that's been done, the next thing to do, and this is also important to, to uh, eliminate frustration, you want to add a rigid body effect to it. And the way to do that is go to object again. Once all this is, once, after you've applied your cell fracture, go to object. From the drop down menu, go to rigid body and click active. And that's going to save you a lot of frustration because if you try to, if you pretty much deactivate this, by clicking off of it and you activate it again and you try to apply rigid body sometimes in blender it'll just apply the rigid body to like one section and then you have you'd be frustrated trying to figure out okay why hasn't it, hasn't it applied it to everything so to, in order to avoid that just as soon as you end up uh, applying your cell fracture apply the rigid body also and with the cell fracture what it does it's made the um, uh, it's fractured it definitely but the default cube is still there so from your uh, display port here to the right, left click on cube, right click, and click delete. And that eliminates the uh, default cube. From here, we want this to fall on top of something. So press Shift A on your keyboard. From the pop-up menu, click plane. Press S on your keyboard and drag your mouse out to scale it up. Go to the left hand side of your user interface, click on the move gizmo. And then from there, you're going to hover your mouse over the z-axis, left-click and drag that down to this, so that's just at the bottom of your cube. Okay, we're going to scroll out so we can get a better perspective of what we're looking at. And hold down your left mouse button to pivot your scene. And we're going to make this active. In order to make this active, because if we press play, the cube is just going to fall straight through it. We want it to fall on top of the mesh, the plane mesh, and pretty much stay there. So once you have your uh, plane mesh at the bottom activated and made, you're going to go to object and then rigid body again and click passive and then press play. And then there you go. That's the rubble for your scene. And let's take a look at it uh, in texture mode. Let's left click on this uh, icon here scroll to zoom in and there you go this that's your cube I mean that's your rubble for your scene so once again it's a very quick and easy way to make rubble and blender for like a war scene you know a, a city that's been devastated by I don't know tornadoes or uh, earthquakes or something of, along those lines a very quick and easy way to make rubble for a destructive scene in blender so once again Thanks you guys for watching and listening and really appreciate you guys who have subscribed and one the ones who will still subscribe. Appreciate you guys also. And you know, as as we all know, the whole COVID nineteen situation, everybody just stay safe and stay healthy. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.